the golden rule with lighting is don't switch them on in the first place. Um, I know you've all heard that before, but it is the truth. Um, the old wives' tale about it not being worth to switch the lights off because it costs more to switch them on again is complete and utter rubbish. Okay? It is always better to switch lights off. All right? That is the way to save money. However, there are things you can do. Um, sorry, it's again, we're about right on this farm. Um, obviously in the parlour where you need a lot of light, he's got his fluorescence. Uh, these are what's known as T8 fluorescents, okay? And they are basically old technology now. Um, you can get fluorescents that look exactly the same, give just as much light out, uh, and they will only consume half the power of these. Having said that, these lights in particular are probably only on four, four and a half hours a day, so the payback um, is probably 12, 13 years not worth doing. However, if they get damaged or they get broken or they need replacing, they need to be replaced with what's known as T5 technology or T5 fittings. The way to tell the difference is the diameter of the tube. Um, and the, the eight refers to the parts of an inch, i.e. T8 are eight eighths of an inch. Um, do you remember the really old big things, uh, about an inch and a half diameter tube, probably plenty of you still got them to be truthful. Uh, they're what's known as T12s, 12 eighths of an inch. The modern ones that any new fluorescent fittings want to be are T5s or 5 eighths of an inch, very thin half inch basically diameter tubes. Um, and they will be consuming half the energy that these lights will be, but giving very similar light outputs. Okay, um, other lighting around the yard, these things here are about as energy efficient as you can get. Uh, they're what's known as 2D fittings, um, so they're fine. Uh, as far as yard security um, and general yard floodlights, things like that, um, if you don't mind using having an orangey line, like the one you can see lit up at the end here, um, either low or high pressure sodium light fittings are the way to go. The, the thing to avoid are halogen. I'm sure you've all got them. Halogen lights that are either 150, 300, 500 watts. Um, very, very high con consumption. If you're leaving them on for several hours a day, they are costing you a lot of money. Okay. If you replace them with a sodium fitting, one of these orangey ones, which is fine for security lighting, yard lighting, things like that, um, you could replace a 250 watt halogen with probably a 70 watt so for a similar light output. So you're talking quite a factor saving there. Um, if you want to be energy efficient but you don't like the orangey light, you can get what's known as metal halides, uh, which are as energy efficient as low pressure sodiums, but they are a very bright white light. So if, for example, you had an inspection area or something like that, and you thought your only option was a halogen floodlight, it's not, you can have what's known as a metal halide. This advantage is they're actually pretty expensive to buy. They're quite a bit more expensive than the low and high pressure sodiums. Um, so there's a bit of a, a loss there to consider. Um, so the, on, on, on fluorescence, are dimmable fluorescence any cheaper when they're dimmed? Uh, generally speaking, not. Uh, the way dimmers work is that they dump the, the unused power as heat. So dimming, generally speaking, doesn't, unless it's a proper dimmable, say for example, dimmable CFL, you know the CFL two things, um, that, that works slightly differently. Not a simple answer, I'm afraid, but generally, certainly dimmers in your house, you're not saving energy by dimming, because it's just dumping the heat out, basically. Um, which brings us rather neatly, actually, on to control. Uh, there are quite a few things you can do on the control side of things. Proximity sensors, uh, obviously just sense when you're, the PIRs, sense when you're about and just light for that. In offices, something like that. No end of farmers, uh, they'll go into their office first thing in the morning, flip the lights on, they'll probably spend half an hour in the whole day in their office, but the lights are burning 12 hours a day. Um, it's just, you know, it's a waste of money. Either switch them off, or if you can't get into the habit of doing it, or you've got staff that can't get into the habit of doing it, which is far more likely, um, use a proximity sensor. Uh, obviously, time switches as well for your floodlights and stuff. Um, we've all done it, walk around the yard, and you know, a, a floodlight's been left on half the day. Uh, you can get um, dust to dawn sensors, which will stop the light coming on during the day. 
Uh, you can also get light level sensors which are quite clever, not particularly useful in a dairy farm, but basically what they do is they sense uh, when there is enough natural light about and they will dim, and there will be savings involved, they will dim the lights to correspond with the amount of natural light. So the, 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 the overall light level is the same, but less is provided by electricity and more by the sun. Okay? Um, other things to look at around your farm, if you've got a compressor, uh, very worthwhile putting your compressor on a time switch um, because I bet there's not often you use your compressor overnight and it'll probably just sit there and every half an hour it will run for two minutes um, just to build the, the pressure back up. Somewhere you'll have a leak and it'll run down. Half an hour later it'll run for two minutes again. Most farms are like that, but it's just throwing money away. If you put it on a time switch, you can at least cut maybe 12 hours of that out and how long does it take to fill the tank up? Four minutes, if that. Um, so that, that's quite a good little trick.